So why are we doing this? Well, I, I like this slide. A colleague of mine has designed it. Um, probably could also be done with Scratch. Um, and much better, I presume. So, but the idea is, you know, we have lots of technologies, and not just technologies like APIs, tools. We also have lots of languages, programming languages, lots of notations that we also call software languages, all kinds of things, also textbooks, web resources, conferences, all kinds of resources in a generalized sense that we are supposed to care about um, as software developers. Or, I mean, if you do a degree in computer science, bachelor degree, master degree, then sort of you should know about some of this stuff, but it's sort of too much, right? So how can you possibly know about all these programming languages, all these modern programming technologies? And so with this project that I'm presenting here, uh, we try to provide, sort of systematically, examples for these technologies. We try to provide abstraction. So we also get about the abstraction in the, in the Scratch context. And, you know, also by using sort of lightweight uh, ontologies, classification schemes, a wiki in particular. We also try to connect things, provide an analogies, okay? So here's a... Uh, just for the beginning, here's again uh, how I think of uh, one on companies, if you care about science fiction, Douglas Adams. Uh, you know, it's a little bit like, we, we try to be like the hitchhiker's guide to the software galaxy, right? Or, I mean, I also call it the wannabe Wikipedia for software developers. It's, it's really just wannabe because, you know, it's not, it's not that big, it's not that, I mean, not nearly as big. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we try to get there and try uh, to make software developers aware of this. So more, more seriously, this is what, what one of one companies is. It's basically this combo of code, I mean open source repository. Uh, basically in this repository you find all kinds of demos for software languages, software technologies. And then we have knowledge around all this stuff, which is basically represented on a wiki. You know, it's also, of course, open. And there's some metadata in the in the background to connect all these things. Okay, now what is this code about? Well, it's essentially about uh, an information system kind of context. So we are building a tiny human resources <coughs> management system, time again. And so basically, with these different technologies, different languages, we build sort of the same system, time again, in the hope that you know by seeing the same tiny system. Everyone will have a scratch implementation by the way. So um, in different uh, contexts, in, with different technologies, perhaps people can, can compare these things, right? So now, how does, before I tell you more about the project, I want to place this a little bit in a broader context, like, you know, obviously um, this project is certainly not the only one that is trying to do something like uh, gathering knowledge about software, Technologies, so I mean, we can even solve with Wikipedia, right? So even Wikipedia does a very good job in, in kind of gathering knowledge about technologies, <coughs> languages. So what you see here is actually just a snippet from Wikipedia showing you like how uh, programming languages are classified, right? So you know, with Wikipedia, as you know, there's all kind of classification supported due to their categories that they have, and I mean, of course. Lots of associations between technologies, languages. I mean, this is this is all great. So this all relates. So we are also interested in that sort of knowledge, right? Or think of code search engines, right? So, for example, here I show you Coders. This is a this is a search engine. Uh, works for many programming languages. It's aware of many software repositories. So what I'm doing here is I'm just entering XML element. Right, which is, uh, if you care about XML programming, this is like the major uh, 
type uh, in a DOM-like API for XML programming. And so I'm just saying all languages show me everything, right? So then uh, I get like many hits and I just show two hits here. So you see it's actually uh, multiple languages. So the, the, we see like a C++ snippet, we see a Java snippet. So to some extent actually even with such a code search engine, you can understand different languages. You can sort of draw comparisons between different languages. It's quite limited in a sense, right? I mean, certain DOM-like APIs, for example, don't call that type XML element. They call it different, right? So they might call it X element or just element, right? So then uh, you're in trouble, right? So what I'm saying is code search engines are cool, but uh, we need other layers of knowledge as well. And by the way, uh, here's also an example of a code search engine that actually has been taken offline, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, uh, that also happens. Now, there are all kinds of attempts to have repositories, or people also call this these days crestomities, uh, collections of programs. So this is the famous 99 bottles of beer crestomity. We are looking here at the, at the Python solution to this 99 bottles of beer problem. You know, basically, this is about a program that's sort of supposed to generate some text uh, kind of the text of a song about 99 bottles of beer, and I think they have, I, I think they have like solutions in like 1,400 languages or something like that. So th this is pretty amazing, right? So you have a you have a small problem, and you can look at it in many different languages, and hopefully again by comparison you can, uh, you know, learn something about these languages. Obviously, as you can imagine, uh, just being able to generate some text of some silly, um, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, context, uh, that might not help you to learn all of the language, but anyway. Uh, there's, more, there's more ambitious stuff, like there's the, the computer language benchmarks game, also previously called uh, Great Language uh, Shootout. Um, so this is basically about having a short list of, you know, more <coughs> performance benchmark-oriented problems, and then trying to solve them with different languages, with different compilers for those languages and trying to figure out which language performs best, right? There's also some sophisticated rules going on, like what is a fair submission to that repository? I mean, so for example, you're not supposed to misuse the language just to make it to the top of the list. Rather, you are supposed to make good use of the language and, well, of course, you can use all uh, um, efforts. I mean, you can use the compiler, uh, you know, all kinds of optimization <coughs> options and so on. But that, that's, that's another effort. Or probably the most advanced one I'm aware of is the so-called Rosetta Code effort, right? This is, uh, this is definitely what people call a program prestomity. Um, so Rosetta Code is sort of task-oriented. Um, so they have, they have some hundreds of tasks, basically low-level, I mean, uh, low-scale, uh, programming tasks like how to connect to computers with <coughs> TCP IP or how to sort on a file, right? I mean all kinds of very specific programming tasks and then the effort is also to uh, develop solutions to these tasks in different languages of course to document all these solutions in this case also on a wiki in fact they are using they are starting to use a semantic wiki so to have a little bit more structured dissociations um, so this is, this is a pretty cool effort. Uh, this is also a nice community project um, uh, that's very inspiring. So yeah, I'm just um, drilling in here a little bit so that you see that they cover really uh, quite some arrears in programming, but again, it's all based on uh, relatively small scale uh, programming tasks. There used to be something called the Java Pet Store, also has been discontinued. Now the Java belongs to to Oracle. Um, so Java Pet Store is, you know, it's a different scale. So that was more about showing how an entire platform is supposed to be used, right? So it's not about programming talks or 99 bottles of beer. It's more about, you know, like you have this huge platform, J2EE or whatever, and how can you make good use of the platform? Um, uh, for some reason it has been discontinued. Anyway, that, that's, that's also a cool idea, you know, if you have this complicated platform with lots of APIs, lots of tools, 
lots of guidelines, right? Um, well, you have to somehow demonstrate how you should use it. Now, um, what you will see, what one one companies does differently is that it doesn't focus on any platform, right? It rather tries to cover everything out there. Now, one more I want to show here, that's Stack Overflow, also great community um, resource, right? When you want to uh, access knowledge about software technologies and software languages, you would just enter some question, and these days, uh, when it's a technical question related to programming, quite uh, naturally, you would end up on Stack Overflow. And um, so I just, I just show one question here. Uh, it, it's about an entity framework, which is a Microsoft technology for object relational mapping. Uh, and that question, quite in the caption, quite in the header already, uh, also refers to Hibernate. Hibernate, as you know, is a persistence technology that, that's uh, originally from the, from the Java platform. So, so this is a nice question insofar that people have this expectation that if they know one technology, in this case Hibernate, they want to sort of uh, uh, transpose this knowledge to another technology, in this case, Entity Framework, right? So the question is totally phrased like that. And um, so this is actually something we, we want to directly address with one one companies, okay? So now, there's probably more resources, and I'm actually very keen in compiling and maintaining such a list of resources. So if you, you, know, if you just had ideas what other resources I should have listed here, uh, please uh, send me a direct message or whatever um, on, on Twitter, okay? So now, what is one one companies uh, in relation to all that? Uh, what, is, what, is it, what is this contribution uh, that the project is making? So this is what I said before, you know, it's code, it's knowledge, it's metadata. So naturally, what, what sort of code do we have? What sort of knowledge do we have? Uh, perhaps what sort of metadata do we use? So I should, I should kind of uh, uh, dive deeper here into detail. So let me first explain why it's called one-on-one companies. Um, well, to some extent, this is sort of an accident and it's hard to explain. But we actually uh, fabricated an explanation finally. So, Think of the American idiom, uh, you know, 101 ways of doing something, right? So, so now in our context, this means uh, there are perhaps 101 ways of building a human resources management system, right? Or think of there are many companies, let's say 101 companies, they all need their information system, their human resources management system, and here we go. So we show how to build this human resource management system in many different ways, okay? So I, I'm just illustrating this here like with some uh, uh, conceived implementations, right? So these all are supposed to be human resources management systems of some companies. So company X is sort of old-fashioned uh, Java company, so they use Swing and JDBC. Now company Y, you know, uses slightly uh, different technologies. They use for GUI programming, they don't use Swing, but they use SWT. And for uh, for the data access layer, they don't use JDBC, but rather they use uh, Hibernate. Now company Z is a little bit uh, well, really modern. Let's say so they want to be web enabled. They use Google Web Toolkit for the GUI. Uh, Part and they use MongoDB, which is like a document oriented NoSQL database. Uh, you know, they don't use relational database. Anyway, so the idea is that by having different implementations uh, using different technologies, uh, we might really just look at these different implementations and, of course, the documentation thereof on the wiki and then hopefully somehow understand these technologies somewhat better. Okay? Now, when I say human resources management system, you shouldn't think this is very complicated. You know, uh, everyone in the project, uh, you know, we don't know anything about human resource management systems. So what we do is we, we use this sort of uh, simple setup here. You know, we have companies. They break down into departments. Departments may break down into sub-departments. Eventually, departments also have employees. That sort of stuff, right? Companies, departments, employees. And of course, employees, if everything goes well, also get a salary, okay? And then the idea of this one-on-one company's uh, implementation exercise is that we implement that data model and we implement some features, right? So we implement the feature to total all salaries for all the employees in the company, 
to also, um, I mean, back then when we started, we used to increase salaries. That's no longer uh, fashionable. So now we cut salaries, right? So and then we have all kinds of other features. I, I'm not showing too much, but uh, you know, we can think of persistence. You can think of import export. You can think of all kinds of GUI-related features, editing employee data, right? So that's the idea implement such a data model, implement some features, and by choosing the right features, uh, you might be able to showcase what your technology or what your language is good for, or, you know, you can, you don't have to, you know, there's a long list of features, it's not like you have to implement all the features. So, for example, if you want to demonstrate some database technology, well, then you don't have to implement the GUI, right? I think if I would be uh, sitting down with you to, to do some scratch implementation, I mean the, the interactive part would be very important, right? So, so that, you know, then we would perhaps focus not on parallelization or distribution, but we would at least uh, try to focus on the basic functionality and the user interface, right? And perhaps some, some scratch specific idea would pop out. So whenever there's a new idea, I mean a new capability, then we might add a feature to the feature model, right? So for example, when we started to put this stuff on a smartphone, well, then we would think about a touch screen oriented user interface, right? So we would add a feature for that. Anyway, so that's basically the idea. So let me just demo one implementation. Um, I mean, many of these implementations look very much alike, right? So you really have to look into the implementation to, to get a feeling, but this one here, uh, okay, so what I'm just doing is, I'm just going to the place where I have checked out the uh, open source repository. So this is called the 101 repo repository. And now in this, in, in this repo we have all these contributions, uh, well, um, all these different contributions, you know, different languages, different technologies. And this we have all the source code here. So I'm now picking one particular implementation. It's called the HTML5 local implementation. So it basically uses HTML5 in the browser. <coughs> it uses local storage, so it's, it stores the company data on your on your hard disk, basically. Okay. Um, oops. Like this. So it's really in the browser. So here is our little implementation, you know, the company is called Mega Analysis. it has two departments, research and development, let's drill into research, um, right, so the research department has a manager called Craig, and there are two employees, Eric and Ralph, uh, Ralph, that's me, Ralph only gets like 2,000 uh, euro, this is not enough, uh, we will change this, right, and then we can go back, um, a uh, very important functionality, as you remember, at this level is the cut functionality, right? So basically, everyone in the company gets only half the salary. Let's let's check it. Um, so probably Ralph should get five thousand. Yeah, it works. Okay. So so this is how it works, right? So there's always a story, you know. Okay, there should be some totaling of salaries, cutting salaries, perhaps a GUI if you want to have one, perhaps some persistent story. We have a persistent story here. So when we say save, you know, it uses the local storage of the browser to save it, okay? Now, so I mean, this is just a list of languages that are covered by the repository. I mean, basically everything is there. If, if, if it's not there, like Scratch, it should be there and it will be there if someone, you know, helps. It's a community project. Okay, same thing with technologies, right? I mean, there's a long list of technologies, and this is a very heterogeneous and actually incomplete list of technologies. What you see here is like APIs, like system.xml, so XML API of .NET, or uh, Java, not Reflect, Reflection API of Java, right? So you see APIs. You also see, I uh, mean, Maven or R or Make, so these are, you know, built systems. Uh, so, so you get an idea of what I mean with technology, right? So it's build systems, it's parser generators, it's compilers, it's APIs, um, it's IDEs like Eclipse, it's uh, persistence technologies, toolkits like Hibernate, right? 
So, so that's the idea that all these things uh, get exercised. And um, so we also we also use the term technological space. I mean, you, I think you need to get an idea by looking at these examples like object where model where grammar where malware, onto where table where. So. You know, in, in, in software development, all of us are in one or in a few technological spaces where we feel at home, right? This is our technology, our knowledge context in which we operate. You know, based on the languages we know, based on the technologies we know, the conferences we attend, the textbooks we read, the web resources we visit, these are our resources of choice. This is how we, uh, you know, build up our knowledge, broader knowledge. and. Uh, the community in which we operate. So what we try to do with this project is we try to also connect these technological spaces. So you can think of this like technological space travel, right? So we try to enable that. Okay, just to give you an idea, here are some metrics about the project. So what you see here is, I mean, you know, uh, all the implementations, well, two months or three months back, uh, because we, we kind of don't have this code running right now to produce these things here. Um, so number of files per implementation. Um, so basically the median here is eight. So what I'm saying here is the systems are small, right? So it's not like when I say human resources management system, perhaps you first got scared, right? No, these are small systems, right? Medium, uh, median file size, file, number of files is eight. Same here, lines of code, right? So the median for lines of code per implementation is 442, so a few screens, right? Of course, there are some outliers, typically Java-based systems, okay? And what you see here is uh, tech clouds for the popularity uh, of the languages and technologies used across the corpus, right? So bigger means more implementations in a repository uh, use that language. So uh, whether I like it or not, well, anyway, so Java is very popular. Or here, you know, the Glasgow has to compile interpreter or the C sharp compiler. So you see. So we basically keep track of um, what technologies and what languages are used. Okay. Or well, here's a different here's a different visualization of this. So this is actually now very much up to date. So what's also nice is, I mean, everything is connected here. This is this is actually computed from data that is actually extracted from the wiki. So the wiki is used to keep track of all these declarations, like what language, what te technologies are used, what features of the system are implemented. So I can, uh, I can, for example, click here, right? And so everything is connected, so this way I actually come to the wiki of 101 and you see every language, every technology has an entry. So we see, okay, this is uh, the functional programming language, it should say, and then uh, there are the key resources pointed out here. So this, this is the primary resource, obviously Haskell.org for that language, and there's a sort of a secondary resource, I mean very good entry on Wikipedia. And then you see citations, so basically uh, all the technologies that are also in that wiki and that refer to Haskell are listed here, all the other languages that are on this wiki and list to Haskell, so this is a specific Haskell version. And then you see some features some features of the 1.1 company system actually specifically make reference to Haskell, presumably to sort of illustrate uh, <coughs> here. And here you see contributions. You see all the contributions on, on the, in the repository that seem to use Haskell, right? So that's sort of, that's sort of uh, cool. So basically everything is cross-referenced, everything is connected within the space. And it's not just within this wiki, as you see here, it also kind of connects to other wikis that are of course, you know, have a different approach, but nevertheless, I mean, they are, you know, I mean, it doesn't make sense for us to write a long page on what Haskell or what Java is. No, I mean, obviously there are much better resources already out there, so we connect to them, okay? Yeah, so I was just starting to show you a little bit the wiki. Um, uh, let, me, let me spend a few minutes to demo this a little bit more. Right, so this is the uh, this is the landing page. Very boring. We are working on this. Sorry, but um, but the point is, this is basically the the list of resources here that we have. I mean, you know, there's a there's a description of the features of the system that you can implement when you do a contribution. There's of course a list of implementations, 
there's a, it's a community project, so well, obviously there are the, the, there's a list of contributors. We have some model of the stakeholders for this sort of project, you know, whether these are teachers or learners, I mean students or developers or technologists, right? I mean, you want to push adoption of the technology. And we, uh, let me go here in a second. So we also group implementations in scenes, you know, basically tailoring whatever you might want to know about technologies. You know, perhaps you want to know about XML programming, then we have an XML theme. Or you want to know about database programming, then we have such a theme. And so on and so forth. So let me just go here because this sort of uh, has a very easy way to get into the into this project. So indeed, what we have here is themes, uh, sort of grouping, implementations, according to some programming domain, right? So suppose you are doing a course on, let's say, XML programming, right? So how to read XML, how to write XML, what different approaches do exist, you know, different kinds of XML parsers, how do these approaches uh, look like in different languages, then you can, for example, go here and say XML theme, okay? So now what we have here is, we have indeed uh, this list of implementations, you know, each of these implementations implements some features like card, portal, and other things. And so you see, we have, for example, the C-sharp link to XML implementation. That's, that's a .NET implementation that uses like state-of-the-art uh, link to XML API of .NET, right? Or we have DOM. I know DOM means uh, dumb in Dutch, but th that's also true. But nevertheless, there's lots of DOM <coughs> out there. Uh, so this is like the standard approach to XML program you know, with the document object model. Or we have SUX, which is the, the more streaming-oriented, the more event-based uh, style. Uh, of XML processing, that you don't build up the XML tree in memory, but rather you stream over the XML input. XML reader, which is not push, but pull, you know, whatever, if it means something to you, or XQuery, XSLT being domain-specific languages for XML queries or transformation. So you see, um, and actually the XSLT implementation is by Vladimir who's sitting there. <laughs> uh, at least that one, but probably some other stuff. Um, anyway, so so you see how this goes, and I mean we could just we could just drill into one of these implementations. Let's just take the SSLD implementation because uh, the co-author is here. Um, you know, so basically this is how it works. I mean, every implementation, at least if there is a good documentation, has such a page. You know, like there's a, a headline briefly explaining what this is, a list of languages, list of technologies being used list of features of the system being implemented, uh, the motivation, explaining why are we doing this implementation, what's the point, right? Illustration, okay, some code snippets, if you get there, architecture, you know, how do the files, the directories work out. Usage, how can you reproduce this example? How do you, how can you build and run the project, right? So you see, so this, the headline here is, ah, we want to do XML processing with XSLD, okay? The language is, now, uh, you would think there should only be XSLT, no, but there's also XML, of course, because the data is represented in XML, so XML should be there. And, of course, the data perhaps should be checked for validity, so there's a schema, an XML schema in the project, so therefore we have, in this particular case, already three languages, right? Technologies, so we list two technologies here, because these are the two XSLT processes that we use in order to demonstrate this code, right? And the features that are implemented are well, three structures, basically that you have companies, departments, employees, you know, it's a data model. Then uh, type driven query, well that's a complicated name for totaling all salaries. Type driven transformation, that's for cutting salaries. Structure driven query is yet another query uh, that, that's uh, sort of more challenging. Now let's not get, get into detail. Data import, data export is here because we are able to deal with sort of non proprietary in, I mean data, right? Because we use XML uh, and XML schema, it's sort of non-proprietary, so it's ready for data and for the export. Okay, so here is some motivation. Uh, you know, it explains that we are using um, XSLT for query and transformation scenarios. 
and we also explain why it's why it's so fit to do Kaplan total, right? So you see illustration, you see uh, uh, architecture is pretty simple here. Basically, each query or each transformation is in a designated file. So that's very easy. And uh, here you see if you want to reproduce it, uh, there's a make file helping with this. So basically, you can run some make file target, and by this you can uh, also exercise the query and the transformation. But it's explained a little bit more in detail here. It also explains what versions of the um, processors that we used here. Everything very nice, and contributors are on the Vadim and myself. Okay. So now this is this is how it works, right? So we have uh, lots of implementations like this, associated documentation like this. Uh, as as you saw, all these things are connected. Like uh, we saw, like this list of citations, like what languages refer to that page, what technologies refer to that page, or the other way around. So everything is everything is connected, and uh, so basically, this means uh, this wiki is, of course, I mean, like Wikipedia, like any other wiki, is very much a knowledge resource. This is a domain-specific wiki for software developers. So it shows, of course, which contribution, which implementation uses what language, what technology, what features implemented, uh, what software concept is exercised, right? Software concept, think of parsing or design patterns, MVC, observer. Uh, think of uh, you know anything you know from software engineering, testing, um, unit testing. Uh, think of anything from programming, plus inheritance, polymorphism, right? So all these concepts would be referenced in the context of an implementation on the wiki page, and by this, uh, all these concepts would be exercised. Uh, Okay, and connected to other implementations. So, but there's also kind of indirect things that you can infer, and we're working on this. So basically, because there's so much, you know, associations on this wiki, but relatively organized, we can also infer sort of more transitive things, right? We can, for example, observe that suddenly we, we understand that a certain technology, um, let's say Entity Framework or Hibernate, helps with a certain feature. Right, so I mean, even without the the, the programmer kind of uh, realizing this immediately, we, we can infer such knowledge, right? Or we can think we can also see things like that a certain technology um, always occurs together with some other technology or a certain language. Let's say uh, XSLT, of course, always uh, occurs together with some other language like XML, right? So, but there are more sophisticated examples. For example, Hibernate, quite often occurs together with XML, even though you would initially not think of it because I've been in for databases or for XML. <laughs> okay, and you can also see things like that developer uh, FUBAR and his skills regarding a certain language or a certain technology. This is very much like on Stack Overflow where you also get brownie points by asking and answering questions, right? So here also by making, uh, by submitting contributions on a repository and by um, uh, editing pages on the wiki, you basically document uh, your skills. So now what's of course missing, we're working on this, is like, you know, all this community wisdom about uh, what is the quality of a certain contribution, uh, how many people like this contribution, and so that's very important to work on. Okay, um, so the last part of the presentation, um, so how much time should I leave for discussion? Like oh, it's, it's very, um, you have uh, less than five minutes. Okay, good. Um, so I just want to, I mean, I think it's very, it's very explicit anyhow already how, how important this could be for education, right? So, in fact, we use this project in student education at a bachelor level. But um, perhaps let me make this uh, even more explicit by giving some references. Okay, so you know, if you go to Google and you know, I mean, obviously there are lots of lectures online, right? So I, I just typed in <coughs> lectures online computer science. I mean, all kinds of stuff pops up, right? Often on, um, you know, basic subjects, right? Introduction to programming, or I mean, at least well defined subjects. Um, you know, we can also narrow this down lectures online on programming languages. Yes, there are such. Uh, uh, lecture is available. So, 
Um, if I sh should summarize uh, how these courses, the existing courses, whether online or not, how they work in software engineering and programming languages, then this is what I would, you know, would say. I would say, you know, many courses they 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 go deep on one particular subject, right? They try to really tell you everything about the full type system and how you get uh, efficient implementations with Haskell, right? Or there, there's also the other the other approach that you do uh, lecture on programming language paradigms, right? That you you know use some textbook or book on paradigms and you try to discuss like uh, programming languages, right? Or there's good old compiler construction, uh, you know, how to parse, how to build intermediate code, how to optimize. Um, how to generate code, right? Uh, there's also more recently people also talk about domain specific uh, languages. Um, and then there are lots of foundations courses, right? In, in a typical curriculum. Um, so, so how do I think is, is the one-on-one -on -one company's approach different here or complementary? Well, I mean, it's obviously when you do something like with one-on-one -on -one companies, it's not focused on foundations, right? It's more it's more broadly uh, focused on all kinds of technologies and languages, right? So what I'm listing here is like three courses that we have done. So the first one, Programming Techniques and Technologies, is a lecture. And the other two, Modern Data Technologies, Modern Web Programming, are actually two um, courses we did for industry, okay? And so here's actually just the uh, list of subjects uh, in the one one course at my university that we do at the master level, uh, at bachelor level. So, you see it's a long list, right? Everything is in there, XML programming, generative programming, database programming, AOP, functional programming patterns, uh, even some data parallel programming, distributed programming. So, normally this would be impossible to do in one course, right? Uh, I think. Um, at least I was not able to do it before, before we had 101. So the idea with 101 is that it helps you to quickly introduce some concepts and to leverage basically that people already know the example, they know the structure, how you explain the example, right? And they know how to navigate on the wiki to find more information, right? And they have this example that they can just run. Uh, it's, it's well prepared to, to be reproducible. And then the assignments are not so much about building some new program with some yet another technology, it's more about um, can you show that you understand this technology to some extent by changing, for example, uh, this program a little bit, right? So, so that's the idea, right? So with this one-on-one -on -one company's structure, we can actually cover quite some subject area, which otherwise would need to be scattered over several courses, or realistically, will actually not be uh, taught to the students at all, right? I mean, especially if you talk about bachelor students, they will basically drop out of university before they have seen many things like that, right? So that's sort of uh, the ambition here. So, and, you know, if, you, if you're interested in this, I have another 20 slides that obviously don't fit into these 45 minutes. And, uh, you know, there I would show you some approaches that we use for abstraction. I mean, uh, how we use ontologies, like classification schemes for languages and technologies. How we use extra browsing technology to help people understanding implementations in terms of what languages are used, what technologies are used, what features are implemented, and they can browse this in a designated manner, right? And also <coughs> what concepts are used, like lex or parser. And we also have a feature model, so we try to model everything, and to a large extent we use the wiki for that, you know, this is all snapshots from the wiki, right? So here you see the feature model, we have behavioral features, uh, quality features, UI features, and so basically uh, I'm drilling in a little bit, and here I'm opening up the behavioral features, show you some more details. We actually looked at type driven query, like total, type driven transformation, cut, but you see there are some other things. So, and uh, that's perhaps it. You see I have more nice pictures, but uh, um, of course I would love to take a few questions instead. Thank you.
is it already in use? Well, I mean, it's it's online mm -hmm. for like one or two years. Well, two years. Um, we um, we have somewhere sixty plus contributors. The, the threshold for contribution is not very low because I mean you know there's some quite some structure that you have to understand and uh, so therefore you know we don't expect to have millions of contributors that would be not very realistic in terms of courses uh, I've talked to several people who are in the process of you know with contemplating of building it into their courses um, but yeah, we will have to see, right? So this, uh, we are at the beginning of the adoption. But are the contributors academic people or uh, in they are mostly They are mostly academic people because I think right now the, the, the contribution process is so complicated <laughs> that... Um, you, you have know, to be an uh, academic to, to get through it or... Yeah, you have to okay. be sufficiently masochistic, okay. yeah. And, um, but we do have some industrial contributors, right? They, they just see it. Um, the thing is, we are, we are really working on simplifying the contribution process. We, we are, for example, we already moved to GitHub and try to make good use of GitHub. But it, it's totally non-trivial, right? So once, once we are there, we, we expect to have more you know, uh, actual software developers from practice to, to help. For example, it must be really easy to change uh, implementation. Right now, you have to clone a huge repository, send a pull request. This is good for normal open source projects, but for this one, where you have like uh, by now I think 150 tiny systems in one repository, for example, that idea doesn't work. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we then we are just people are just cloning too much, sending too much pull requests. So we need to kind of set up a process that works with this uh, approach. But yeah, that's sort of the plan. So it is, it is really meant to not stay a um, scientific campus project, but to really become something... Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, but even if it would just be used uh, in academic, I mean, bachelor mm -hmm. education, computer science, it's also cool. Because, you know, as I said, I, I, I sort of think that... Um, <coughs> The, the way how we do uh, education around programming and software engineering it doesn't scale anymore, right? So people, everyone wants to have this big course. Like one guy wants to do a big database course, another guy wants to do a big design pattern course, then yet another guy wants to do his functional programming course. Uh, you know, the, in the end, we have like 20 heavy courses, and we still have people still don't see all the connections between all the technologies and languages in computer science. <laughs> and actually, these courses will not fit nowhere close into a bachelor curriculum. So therefore, I, I fundamentally believe that we need to use resources like this, but not just that, also Rosetta Code, Stack Overflow, uh, to, to you know, help people to build up some abstractions and some connections uh, between many uh, engineering concepts, languages, and technologies. Okay. Can, can you tell me what are the addresses of this really? What are the addresses? Yes, uh, it's just very simple. It's uh, 101 companies dot org, right? So, okay. So, thank you very much. And as I said, uh, would, I would be very keen to show you more. You know, I'm also very keen to learn Scratch.